Things are looking up for the Nats, taking advantage of the late season schedule, trying to make a run to the playoffs. Tonight, they get Miami again, going the other direction, but still dangerous in spots. Gio Gonzalez offers his hook to the fish in an effort to finish off the sweep. Welcome to Nationals Park, Navy Yard Station, a block up the street, and folks coming down to see the big parking structure. You know, the way Ian Desmond's swinging, he might hit a fly ball off of that thing sometime soon. Nats have dominated the Marlins, 8 of 11, 5 in a row here, and so far in this series, just enough offense, just enough pitching and defense to get this thing done. But over the last three weeks, the offensive numbers have really improved. Yeah, and, and so is the approach. I mean, on a, on a team-wide basis, when you talk about these guys going to the plate with a game plan, you can see the results. I mean, Rick Shue named the hitting coach July 22nd, 34 games. In those 34 games, this ball club's hitting 271 with 336 on base percentage. And when you look at the numbers right there, the last 18 games, 5.3 runs a game, 10 hits per game. The batting average up, the on-base percentage up, and the slugging percentage up. But guess what? The bottom line right there, 13-5 and five record. We've been waiting for the offense all year. It's arrived. Ian Desmond right in the middle of everything. Last four games, he's been almost unstoppable. Long home runs, line drives to the gap. He's even going the other way for some singles. And we're showing the obvious stuff, right? Desmond swinging the bat. But to me, you go back to that game in Kansas City when the team was down by six runs. And with a bad back, he went to second base hard. That's walking the talk. That's what leaders do. And, you know, obviously the results are there. The last five games, a 500 average, 11 for 22 with two home runs. But, you know, it's a guy that's leading by example. He's done that for the last side. With two years. He's wearing out the Marlins in this series. Couple of RBIs, but he is six out of eight in the first two games. So over 360, the last two and a half as Desmond hits the Nationals win. And now you turn it over to Gio tonight to keep this thing going. Strasburg only a couple of innings last night. Bullpen a little taxed. They could use Gio with a long outing tonight. Yeah, well, Gio Gonzalez got to stick his nose in there. Remember last time out in Kansas City, didn't get the job done, had the blister on his finger, said he was gassed from the 120-pitch effort last time out. Yeah, but it's all hands on deck right now. It's pennant race baseball. They're trying to contend to the wild card, and he's got to get the job done tonight. Gio's been good at home this year, 287 ERA and 13 starts. Good opponents batting average, 4-3. and three. We know he should have more wins. How about a curly W for the lefty tonight?
to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. Nice night for a boat ride, but a better night for a ball game. It's going to be comfortable at the yard tonight. Nets take the field against the Marlins for the sixth time this year. And they've done great against the Florida Ball Club, beating them five out of five. Train celebrating its 100th anniversary by offering irresistible financing. It's hard to stop a train really hard. So the humidity not as high as last night, 83 degrees and just a hint of a breeze. Flag's not doing a whole lot at the yard right now. The Nats are trying to make it three over 500, eight of nine, and 14 out of 19. Marlins have battled them. Some close ball games have gone the Nats' way. Their lineup and Justin Ruggiano in this series. Well, the first night he batted sixth. Last night he batted leadoff. Tonight he's the cleanup man behind John Carlos Stanton, but he's having a good month. After an epic 0 for 42 recently, he has rebounded well. Gio makes his fifth career start against his hometown team. He's 2-2 two and two with a 1.93 earned run average. Yeah, started last time out in Kansas City, but thanks to Tanner Roark and the Nats offense, they bailed him out. Got the 11-10 win. Lasted just three and a third innings. Allowed seven runs on nine hits. So struck out only one Royal. Walked three. Allowed two home runs through 77 pitches. Fastball, curveball, change. Three-pitch guy. That's what the Marlins are going to see. Set the defense for the Nats behind Gio Gonzalez tonight. Harper Span Worth here outfield. Desmond Zimmerman left side. Rendon LaRoche the right side of the infield. And the Buffalo's an Iron Man right now. Wilson Ramos behind the dish again. Every day right in front of the home plate umpire. Tonight it's 14-year veteran Alfonso Marquez. Ted Barrett's the crew chief at first. Mike DeMuro second base. And Scott Berry at third. So Gio goes out for his overall 27 start of the year. League only hitting 237 against him. Looking for win number eight. It's just been a very strange year for Gio and for Strasburg. Pitching well. At times lacking run support and hopefully getting more of that these days. Donovan Solano will be the leadoff man tonight. A couple of hits last night. He's two for eight in the series. Second mid baseman batting 254. First pitch misses were underway at 7.07. As the Nats play their 133rd game of the year, 40 left, pardon me, 30 left, including tonight. And Gio comes open, and that one stays way outside, 2-0. and He's had 155 innings on the year. And he gets that one in there. By the way, the Mets will be here tomorrow night. They beat the Phillies at home 11 3 today. It's the only final in the National League and only two other ball games involving National League teams. Brewers are at Pittsburgh. They're a half game. Pittsburgh is behind St. Louis in the Central. And the Braves will again host the Cleveland Indians. Atlanta's won three straight and they have 80 wins. Two two on his hands and Solano able to fight that off. He's an aggressive hitter. He'll go the other way. Takes hard swings just like his older brother, the Nats catcher. And Gio, with that in mind, will take a little bit off and have him way out ahead for the first out of the game. Well, if you remember last start in Kansas City, Gio Gonzalez didn't have a feel for the curveball at all. Couldn't throw it for a strike. Didn't get it near the strike zone at all. Might have had something to do with that blister on the ring finger of his left hand, but that curveball right there in a two-strike count, nice. He didn't even throw one close to a strike last time out. That one was the good one. Here's Zed Lucas, the first baseman. Thirty one year old rookie over nine years in the minor leagues originally drafted by Kansas City. 
And that one up and away. He couldn't reach it. 0-2. Well, it's just so important for Gio Gonzalez to get off to a good start when you talk about last time. Three in the first the Royals got. Three in the second the Royals got. Never really recovered after that. I talked to him after the game. He said the outing before that really took it out of him. The 120 pitches against Atlanta. And a hook. It's hit out to the gap. And Jason Worth will run it down. Pretty good swing by Lucas. As Gio pulled out the big curveball. Stanton will bat with the bases empty. So the Nats at home have outscored the Marlins. And Miami got three of those five runs last night. Only two in the first four games. Gio has been very good. Should have more than a two and two record against the Fish. And Ryan Zimmerman scoring a run in eight consecutive games. And Nick Johnson has the longest 11 back in 05. Well, that's Zimmerman's job now. He's scrappy top of the order guy. He's supposed to <laughs> score runs. And number two hitter driving the ball the other way. Gio starts John Carlos Stanton with a heartbreaking ball. In this series, Stanton a long home run last night. Two for seven with a walk. I mean, he hit a one iron out of here to straightaway center field. Showing the breaking ball plenty early. You, know, you just tell the way he took that he was on the breaking ball just didn't like the height of it. He's hit 12 homers driven in 21 career against the Nets. Three and one. And some gas upstairs tailing away 93 for a foul tip. No challenge fastball right here from Gio Gonzalez. There's some good two seam run on it. Bell tied, just got a piece. Yeah, you know there was a redirect of Ramos couldn't hold it. And that ball just right back to the screen in a hurry. It's a powerful fastball to a powerful swing. And the roundhouse curveball stays outside. No disrespect to Justin Ruggiano or any of the other Marlins, but it's the worst hitting team in baseball. So if you walk Stanton, you walk him, you throw your pitch, hope he gets himself out. And now Gio will deal with Justin Ruggiano, who's hit 15 home runs. Well, the first 3 2 fastball right here scared, I think, Wilson Ramos into a curveball with that swing right there. Stanton on the heater, fouled it straight back. He went 3 2 curveball, missed. Can't blame him for that. High chopper. Zimmerman on the run. And it was a do or die play, and the ball stayed under his glove. Base hit. Two on, two out. And tried to get to the bottom of that big hop and just missed it. Knew he was going to get it in between. Or we've seen him scoop this one before, but it looked like the ball just kind of stayed down, hit Zimmerman in the knee. For the first hit of the night in this baseball game, an infield single. Tough guy to face now in this situation. Contact hitter Placido Polanco. Just one at bat in this series. They just took him off the DL. 79 hits this year and 2,123 in his career. He strikes out once every 15 at bats. A lot like his teammate Juan Pierre. Polanco against Gio, four for 15 career with a homer and two RBIs. Nice on the breaking ball. Might have been a change up right there at 84. Pulled the string on it. Well, Polanco's got a three at the start of his average against a lot of ball clubs. A lot of damage with the Phillies. Yeah, to me, every outing that Gio Gonzalez throws, everybody thinks about the curveball change of the secondary pitches. If he commands the fastball to the inner half against righties, that's when he goes deep into games and that's when he has success if he makes you have to commit to 94 95 on the inner half it opens up everything else 
So it's all about the glove side fastball to me for Gio Gonzalez. Two one pitch and Polanco lines it right at Jason Wood. Got the first two walked a man gave up an infield hit and then Gio is out of the first inning. Here come the Nats with that resurgent offense. Just a couple of days away. Red Rocker, Red Sunset. Let's do this. <laughs> Sammy Hagar here later tonight, but he's not in the lineup. <laughs> it's brought to you by Mazda. We believe if it's not worth driving, it's not worth building. And Bryce Harper making plenty of noise lately during his 10 game hitting streak. 16 hits and over his last 12 games an on base percentage of just under 500. Bryce has three hits and an RBI in this series. Anthony Rendon back at second base tonight. Lombardozzi started there last evening. Let's get their first look at 27 year old Tom Kohler. Eight games, one start a year ago. And he is making his 18th start this year. He became a starter for the Marlins on May 12th. And as a starter, three and eight with a four and a half ERA. Only one net has ever had it a bat against him, and that's Scott Hairston in the dugout. So here's Denard Span, and it's high in the zone for a strike. Well, his fastball go 92 96. A little run to it, usually away early with the fastball, then in late. Good curveball, probably his best secondary pitch. Slider's been better, but at times can be flat. And Span will hit it to the backhand side. And a bit of a funny hop Solano got. That'll be an interesting decision for the score. Not an easy or a routine play. And there's an H on the board already. Yeah, there goes the no hitter. Quick style, Denard Span. I mean, not waiting around for anything. The new and improved and aggressive Denard Span keeps on hitting. And that was really the only chance Solano had going to that glove and it throwing over his shoulder to try to get the speedy span. But another base knock for Denard. He matches his career high with a 12 game streak. Second night in a row he's led off the ball game for the Nats with a hit. Here's Ryan Zimmerman. Just one thing left in an art span's game if he can lock it in on the bases and start to become a serious stolen base threat to go with this new aggressive approach at the plate and how he's swinging the bat you add that to his defense and his hitting ability right now now you got a legit threat at the top of the order to where you're really putting pressure on a defense target in Zimmerman cracks one to left and that's in front of Ruggiano and the Nats lead to nothing kind of a different sound off Ryan's bat there and maybe if he gets it further down on the sweet spot it carries for an out but he dropped it in there and the guys are off to a good start not waiting around are they just coming up packing belt tied to Seamer might have got 
a little off the barrel, like you said, had a funny sound. Got on top of it enough to drop it in front of Ruggiano and left for a knock. So first and second, nobody out here in the first. So here's Bryce Harper with a 10 game streak. Batting 378 over the last two weeks. He really came alive on the road trip. And a fastball to the outer edge for a strike. Kinetic North American. It's been a lot of called strikes on Bryce away lately. That one really looked away. I mean, he has really had to expand his zone because of some of the away calls for strikes. Oh. FP maybe. Fans don't realize how much that changes an entire at bat, changes an entire at bat when that first call doesn't go your way. Well, it, it, it can if you let it. I mean, obviously, if you're facing an elite guy, one of one of the top echelon guys in the league, like a Kershaw, and they get strike one on you. Yeah, but if you get a bad call for strike one, you got to turn the page, throw it away, and focus on the rest of the at bat. You can't let the first pitch affect you mentally. Hard slider in for the strikeout. That'll bring in Worth. To the defense for the Fishes behind Kohler today. Ruggiano Marisnik standing in the outfield. That's Averia Polanco, Solano Lucas, and Jeff Mathis doing the catching. Here's Worth, one for seven. A homer, though. Two RBIs and a walk in the series. Hit a home run last night that matched location, distance of the one by Stanton earlier in that sixth inning. They both went batter's eye straight away center. Man, Jason Worth just feeling it right now. I mean, there's no other way to put it. When you talk about the body language, the swagger, the confidence level he has, and you know how he talked about in that interview swinging from the on deck circle and be more aggressive. It's definitely paid off for him. I remember sitting up here his first year as a national thinking why didn't he swing at that? I mean how many fastballs did he take down the middle in 2011 and you knew what a good player he was. But all part of the adjustment process now a lot more aggressive and looking to do some damage every single pitch. Worth hits it hard. Solano and Echeverria will turn it into a 4 6 3. So the Nats had the first two men aboard. They'll strand one, but hitting the ball pretty well first inning.
Gio Gonzalez against the Marlins. April 3rd, six innings pitch, gave up two hits, struck out five Marlins. On a cool night here at Nats Park, also decided to check in with the Tater. Got a hanger right out over the plate, knew what to do with it. So it was the Geo show here on April 3rd and a 3 to nothing Nats victory. Yeah, a little curtain call, too. <laughs> yeah, and that home run with one out in the fifth inning was the first run of the game. The Nats would get an unearned run in the seventh. And Ryan Zimmerman, RBI in the eighth. So they shut out the Marlins first two games of the year before winning the third one, 6-1. to one. A Danny Echeverria leads off and singles right up the middle. First base hit in nine at bats in this series. I think at all nine at bats he swung at the first pitch too. Seems like it. Second inning presented by Luna. Call for the Luna double. Get your second room of flooring free at 877-241 Luna. Next batter is 22-year-old rookie Jake Marisnik from Riverside, California. Drafted originally by Toronto, one of the guys who came over in that mega deal last offseason. 31st game, 17 hits and 94 at bats, and he shows Bunt getting Ryan Zimmerman on the move straight in. Six foot four guy that can really play center field, plus defensive guy, and he can fly. So, how about being that big and being able to run and just looking at his body frame right now? Deal Murphy. Good call. Good speed at first, too. Although Echeverria hasn't mastered the percentage yet. He's stolen 11, but he's been caught nine times. And Marisnik takes a big rip. He's hitting a buck 81 with one big league home run and five RBIs. It's a good looking young frame. Six foot three, 224 from Riverside, California. Deal Murphy, six foot four, 210. Obviously, not comparing careers at this point. They had to send Marizic back to the minor leagues. A little overwhelmed first time up. Having trouble getting to that fastball in the inner half. But a good looking young prospect. 1 2 pitch. And Gio over to check the runner instead. There's the not so great percentage. But he's learning, he's young. He can play some good shortstop. And the off speed pitch had the right handed batter Mark. way out ahead. First inning, 21 pitches. Two out walk, and then an infield chopper for a hit. Breaking ball, LaRoche. Desmond return throw to the pitcher and the runner was going to beat Gio over there so he and Desmond held the ball. Well, there's no way you're going to go 3 6 1 3 6 3 and Marisnik. He just flies. I mean watch him get down the line. No shot. It might even be a good exchange of runners when you showed Echeverria stolen base percentage but just putting the ball in play here and for six foot four that's flying. Yeah, I thought Gio looked a little surprised when he covered first and looked up and saw that guy go flying by. Catcher Jeff Mathis in the series, couple of hits, a homer, two RBIs. And the number eight hitter fouls one back. He's two for 12 against Gio. They have faced each other in the American League before. 30 year old catcher. There were seven players who came from Toronto to Miami. With Bonifacio, Burley, Josh Johnson, Jose Reyes, and Cash heading north. Well, Marisnik was the key to that deal. He's a big prospect in the Jays organization. They wanted.
Well, I talked to Mike Redmond during batting practice, and I know you visited with him throughout the season. He's feeling good about some of the young talent he's seeing, especially the arms. But there are harsh lessons to be learned at the big league level for a young ball club. And you touched on. They're going to have to develop players because free agents are not offensive players, not going to want to hit at Marlins Park. Well, it's just a tough place to learn at the highest level. Obviously, the talent's there, but when you're you're learning at the big league level, it's just such a hard place to fail. And if you're getting your point across as a manager, you're just hoping they're learning lessons every day. And they can apply them to the next day to where they're not making the same mistakes over and over again. Gio goes change up and misses three and one with the pitcher coming up. Pretty big rip by Mathis, who's hit four home runs this year. Good athlete, Jeff Mathis. He's a high school quarterback in Mariana, Florida, and was recruited by Florida State. Angels made him their first rounder back in 01, signed by Casey Kochman's dad, Tom. Change up walked him with the runner going two on one out. That's an odd pitch choice right there by Gio Gonzalez and Wilson Ramos. Mathis laid on the fastball the whole that bad. And they decide to go 3 2 change up. First six starts. ERA way up there. Did get a couple of breaks with a 500 record. Then he was dominant for a while. But he did have eight no decisions. Now lately, 0 oh 3. And getting out of the way was Kohler with that ball just flying in right at his hands. I'm wondering if that got him. At first he acted like it. Let's see. I don't know if that pinched a finger on the bat on the top hand or not. Let's see. That's will show it right here. It might have got that thumb right across the barrel. Bunch it in the air straight back and out of play. Boy, didn't look too comfy right there. Has one sacrifice as a big league hitter, two for 28 this year. That's one of those where my bat's hanging out over the plate, but my heart's really not in it. Maybe based on that first pitch. And on 0 2, LaRoche lets it drop. Runner is barely out at second base, and Adam did that because he was trying to get a double play. And that was interesting. Well, I thought on the double pump, it might allow Jeff Mathis to get into second base. And I think LaRoche dropped it because he was hoping that Kohler didn't run. You could turn the double play, but Kohler did a smart thing. Didn't give up on the play. How many times do you see a pitcher bunt the ball in the air and just stop running? He kept going. And the double clutch by LaRoche made it very, very close at second base. Mike DeMuro right on top of it. Looked like he made the right call. First and third, two outs now. Donovan Solano, the hitter. Ian Desmond went first base mode there and came popping off the bag with that foot. Sold the call pretty well to Mike DeMuro. And Gio misses downstairs 2 and 0. Oh. A couple of long innings now to start this game. 21 and 17 on the pitch count. Some clutch numbers right there. A 
Not even close. Third walk of the first 10 batters, coupled with two hits. Bases loaded. And Ed Lucas, the rookie, coming. And Lucas hit the ball well first time, lined out hard to the right center gap on a ball run down by Jason Worth. 40 pitches already in this game for Gonzalez. 23 strikes, 17 balls. Can't throw a fastball for a strike. Try something else. Go with the changeup first pitch. Nicely done. Nissan will track ball one. Oh. Pitch track likes a low strike. I think this ball's down. See Wilson. The glove almost hit the ground. So. And a ball popped up short center. Span on the move. He's there. So a lot of base runners early for the Marlins. They strand five in the first two innings. Ian Desmond is red hot. Six of eight in this series. 13 for his last 28. And his betting average up to a season high, 283. They've already done their pregame job, and it's 0-2-0 Fish, 0-2-0 Nats. So red bands, first 80 games, gray bands, last 52. And with hits per game, runs, batting average, and on-base percentage. And, of course, that number two category, the most important of all FP, significant improvement across the board by the offense. And that's the only one that really matters right there when you talk about the Nats' record when they score three runs or more. The offense is clicking. It almost had to if they want to stay in this thing, and they have. Ian Desmond last night using the ballpark up the middle, right field, left field, you name it, he's getting hits. Oh yeah, first time up, base hit up the middle, deflected to Solano at second base. So infield single, second time up, third time up, excuse me, line drive to right, second hit of the day, and then the game winner. After walking Jason Worth. With first base open, Ian Desmond gets the go-ahead run, the game winning RBI, and I think he's officially 47 for 47 when somebody walks in, <laughs> walks to get to him. You'd think somebody would learn after three or four. I just made that up. I really don't know, but it seems like it. So 362 over his last 17 games and almost 500 over the last seven.
Little late for that fastball and a pop up into the twilight right side. Lucas sees it and grabs it for the first out. LaRoche and Ramos the next two. We invite you to become a season plan holder next year. You can receive bonus e-cash and multi-year price locks. These special offers expire September 30th. So visit nationals.com slash 2014. Some restrictions apply. It's a great way to enjoy Nationals baseball. Get together with some friends on a package and see a lot of action right here at Nationals Park. By the way, start of the year. We showed that graphic four and a half runs a game last 52 games. That's are 60 and 16 when they score three runs or more. 60 and 16. Wow. Tribute to the pitching staff. Give them any support at all. They'll keep the other guys down. Tom Kohler has shown us some breaking stuff down and in the left handed batters. Strike out Bryce Harper. First inning, two on, nobody out. Got a strike there on LaRoche to make it 0 2. Adam, five hits, three walks, his last five ball games. Two for eight in this series. And on a off speed pitch away, just pulls it over to Donovan Solano, two outs. Brings in Wilson Ramos. Last 10 starts. Kohler better. Coming off a seven inning outing with a run on six hits against the Rockies. 3 2 loss, but he threw 101 pitches and pitched well. Tonight, 15 pitches, 14 strikes to his first six batters. Nationals seeing him in person for the first time. He's gone six innings or more eight times, seven or more five times, and one eight inning outing May 29th against the Tampa Bay Rays. Little two hopper down to Polanco, and the Nats go very quietly and quickly all on the infield in the bottom of the second. Kohler pitching well. Now Gio back out for his third inning of work. Bannon Zimmerman to start the game. Nets couldn't do much with it in the bottom of the first. Moment in history brought to you by Volkswagen. Their best thing ever event going on. Visit VWDealer.com. And on this date in 93, George Brett joined an exclusive club. Stolen base number 200. Only Willie Mays and Hank Aaron had stolen 200 with 300 homers and 3,000 hits. You saw him in Kansas City. Yeah, George was in the house Friday night when the Nats were there. Folks enjoying a beautiful evening at the ballpark. 83 degrees, been kind of sun in and out. I want to party with those guys after the game at the Hagar concert. Look at that, they're ready to roll, especially the guy in the curly W lid. 
A lot of folks putting their red on tonight. So here's John Carlos Stanton. Gio walked him with two outs in the first inning. Nobody on. Led to a 21 pitch inning. Then he threw 22 in the second. Stan had some good rips at the Gonzalez fastball first time up. Looked like he was seeing it big. And Gio steps into a 2 1 pitch. A little low. Stanton sitting dead red on three and one straight back and went a lot like the first time. Well he's had some good rips there's just a late hop on the fastball that's. Just getting by Stanton so far not by much though. Three two launched and well foul. Oh my goodness and that's up on the concourse. Oh my goodness. And I know what the next thing you're going to say is. Oh my goodness. Those folks up there were not expecting get, to get a foul ball. No, I, I got nothing <laughs> but oh my goodness. <laughs> Three, two. And he rips one straight back. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the people in the apartments across the street didn't expect to get a foul ball tonight. Way up on the concourse. Never seen a ball go there. Hard breaking ball to strike him out. Gio second K of the night. Nothing but a designer strike and Gio Gonzalez gets back in the zone to get the K. Mercedes will track it a beauty. You see trying to pound Stanton in with the whole sequence then Stanton maybe thinking about a fastball in the inner half. Man. Kind of left early with the front side and the curveball got him. That ball had so much movement. Did you see how far Ramos had to reach to his left to catch it? Not as far as that foul ball went. <laughs> so here's Ruggiano who chopped one either off the plate or near the plate. And Ryan Zimmerman couldn't glove it and throw him out. That bat shatters on a ground ball to Anthony Rendon. Two outs. It's funny. It was just a foul ball. But when you're standing on defense and somebody does that, I guarantee you there's eight guys out there thinking the same thing I was. Maybe even saying the same thing to themselves. There's something about you as a baseball player that admires a ball that's hit that far and that hard, even if it is foul. Line drive by Polanco right at Adam LaRoche. Gio gets a badly needed quick one, two, three, top of the third.
Gonzalez and Span. Coming up next, our Firestone Complete Auto Care Extra Mile Index. So the Nets have had some great months, obviously, in their history. July of 06, Soriano going crazy. Daryl Ward was hot that month way back when. This month, August of 2013, the second best ever at a 281 team clip. And, of course, last year, month of July, the Nets really got it going. Desmond was playing as well as anybody in baseball. Michael Morse was back. They did that without Jason Wirth last year. But you're looking at one of the big reasons right there. The igniter has been Denard Spann. And then Bryce Harper super hot over the last week and a half himself. I just think there's a lot of reasons why that is. And, and first and foremost is the hitters. I mean, I know we talk about the hitting coach a lot. But the hitters are the one that they're going up there and executing game plans right now. They've all been consistent in their approach on a daily basis. And for whatever reason, they look more relaxed collectively as a group. Well, they're squeezing the, the sawdust out of the bat anymore. And been waiting all year for some offense, and it's here. One of my favorite things to do during BP is just hang around the cage and watch the hitting coach watch his hitters. You know, listen to the little things he might say to them. And you'll see Rick Shue down there right behind the cage. And as soon as he sees something, when a guy's little sequence is over, he'll run around to the side of the cage, talk privately with him, and then he'll come back to his perch right back there. Rendon fouls out to Ed Lucas. And right now, that is six in a row for Tom Kohler. But it is the first time through the order. That's getting a brand new look at this guy for the first time. So Zimmerman after Span, but first Gio Gonzalez. And they had him on the ropes early. Three hard hit balls in the first inning. And now he's kind of settling into this baseball game, realizing. And Gio sounded good off the bat, but it fades right to Ruggiano for the second out. So the Nats go two for nine, first time through. Tomorrow night, how about a T-shirt? It's a Nats T-shirt from our friends at American University. You must enter through the center field gate to receive it. That's while supplies last. 20,000 of them. Some restrictions apply. Go to nationals.com slash tickets. And if you haven't heard, we'll tell you later about the fireworks after the game tomorrow night as well. So Gavin DeGraw Saturday night. Fireworks and T-shirts tomorrow night. And for those who are here, Sammy Hagar tonight. Outside to Denard Spann, who singled up the middle off Solano's glove to start the game for the Nets. Two and zero. Oh. Twelve game streak, four thirteen average. Swinging it. We'll see if tomorrow night if he can take it out to a new career high. He'll pull that ball to Donovan Solano. Eight in a row now for Tom Kohler, and he comes up with an eight pitch third inning.
Marlins, who play that way. Pitchy matchups as we get the Mets in town tomorrow night. Jordan Zimmerman, Dylan G, 7.05 tomorrow night. Dan Heron, Zach Wheeler on Saturday in a Sunday day game. The Nats will announce soon who's starting that game. Probably not Steven Strasburg taking on Jonathan Neese. And then it's on to Philadelphia. The Nats will start another extended road trip to Philly, Miami, and New York. So after Sunday, one home stand remaining. Echeverria, Marisnik, Mathis, top of the fourth for the Miami Marlins. Geo's 55th pitch of the night, his 33rd strike. Echeverria on the first pitch, singled leading off the second, took it right up the middle. In the series, Echeverria one for nine, and he's one for three career against Gio Gonzalez. Kohler just throwing strikes. I mean, he's only missed with five pitches in three innings. No swing, says Ted Barrett, the crew chief. So, an attempt? Looks like he held up. Target in means fastball. Blew it right by him, 93. Third strikeout for Gio Gonzalez, and that's five in a row now. Well, you kind of know if Gio Gonzalez did get through the first couple of innings and find that rhythm and groove and kind of settle down. Very excitable guy every fifth day, and sometimes it takes him a minute to get to his release point and his mechanics. Last time he said he lost his release point, and this time he looks like he's on top. And getting some good sync on that fastball away. That was Kinetic North America with our pitch track, and that's outside to Jake Marisnik, the center fielder. Ground ball to Adam LaRoche, first time on a fielder's choice. Walks have extended some innings for Geo. Really, only one clean hit. The Echeverria hard ground ball up the middle, back in the second. Where you feel like he's got him set up for that fastball down and in with two strikes if he can get it there. Goes with a breaking ball down there and that hot shot a foot or two outside the bag. A souvenir. Awesome. 2-2. Two, two. And a little flare up the middle. No way to reach it. Ian Desmond could only wave at it as it went by. One on one out, and that's their first base runner since the walk to Solano back in the second. So things happening quickly the way these guys are pitching tonight. Gio's given up three hits, three walks. Tom Kohler only two hits, hasn't walked a batter, great control. So here we are in the top of the fourth inning at Nationals Park. 
Nats are 38 and 29 at home this year. First pitch swinging Jeff Mathis out of play. The Marlins are 33 games under 500. And 23 of it is on the road. Trying to break a three game losing streak they are Nets trying to sweep this series and get ready for the Mets. I'll tell you what that was a nice at bat by Jake Marisnik fouled off some tough Gio Gonzalez curveballs on the inner half got a change up went right back up the middle. Stuck his nose in there won the battle. Jeff Mathis likes playing against the Nats. <laughs> One of those guys coming over from the American League. Kind of funny, he went 3 2 fastball. Excuse me, he went 3 2 change up to Mathis last time. And it's all he's throwing his fastballs this time around, challenging him. Still hasn't really got the head out there on the heat. Yeah, odd numbers about Mathis, a 198 career hitter. He had one year with the Angels where he hit 289, another 211, everything else on the interstate. And he's a buck 96 this year, but he's handled the Nats pretty well. 0 2 and a breaking ball by Gio down in the zone, strikes him out. And that curveball's been a good neutralizer for him tonight against some right handed batters. By the way, Mathis was cheating to get to that fastball. Thought he was going to get another one. And because of Gio Gonzalez establishing that heat in the zone, now as a hitter, you feel like when you've been late on some, fouled a few off, you got to you got to start your swing early to get to it. And you pull the string on a curveball on your way out in front. Mariznick still at first base now and two outs as the pitcher Tom Kohler fouls one off. Not a bad looking hack right there. A product of Stony Brook University where he went for four years. And well outside one ball one strike. Born in the Bronx went to Rochelle High School New Rochelle High School in the New York area. And late for that one one ball two strikes. Worth very shallow and right on the offside. And the breaking ball, he got a piece of it. Pretty good heat there, 94. Geo strikes out the side. Gives up a hit after one batter. And the Nats have good do up. Second time around the batting order now. Spans made an out, but Zimmerman, Harper, and Worth will be seeing Kohler for the second time around. Good inning for Gio.
Dogs Contour reshapes TV completely around you. Recommending more of what you like to watch, like the Nets on Masson. Head to the bottom of the fourth. No score, and it's been a pitcher's duel here at Nats Park. And, and it's all started with Tom Kohler on the ropes early in this game. And first and second, nobody out after a few singles by Span and Zerman. Struck out Harper, and then Jason Worth with a bullet right at Solano for the 4 6 3 double play. Gio Gonzalez wobbled early, but it looks like he's got his rhythm, his tempo. The curveball is back tonight. It wasn't their last time out against Kansas City, and the fastball has been good as well. So, no score and a pitcher's duel. And the well talked about all year long, second time around the batting order here. Zimmerman clean single to left first time. Ryan over his last 10 games heating up as well batting over 320. Ryan's had one hit in every game of this series. They've come early in the game as three singles. On the previous two, he scored. And that one just up and away, 85, cutting its way away from the right handed batter. Well, that's where it gets a guy like Kohler. He's got that good run on the fastball. Zimmerman working hard to get to a 3 1 count, looking for something elevated out over the plate. Get a fastball, get a strike, let it rip. Zimmerman, free pass to start the fourth inning. Ryan's on for the second time. And Kohler issues his first walk. So let's see what he has for some of these talented hot hitters as they see each other for the second time. He struck out Bryce Harper. Got a break on strike one, fastball away. Then Bryce went reaching for a foul ball. And on 0 2, he threw a really tough slider under Harper's hands. Going first pitch changeup. Harper hits it deep to left. Going back, Ruggiano, and it is gone. Opposite field. 2 0 Washington. Was that swing right there from Bryce Harper? He'll pick a pitch and sit on it first pitch, and he looked like he knew that changeup was coming. But just smoothed it out there, right? We've been talking about the 85% swing for a couple of nights now. Watch how easy this is for Harper. He squared it up, it was loud, but there wasn't a whole lot to it, not a lot of movement. Been working on staying on that backside, and it pays off, and all of a sudden the action is fast and furious. So Worth goes to right. He's hit the ball well twice opposite tonight. Yeah, look how smooth. I mean, not violent at all. We've gotten used to the Bryce Harper violent swing to where he's jumping at the pitcher. And that's, once again, 85, 80% opposite field homer. Impressive. Very impressive. Ian Desmond, you know he loves to hunt first pitch fastballs, and that one 
breaks away from him. I mean, can you say a two-time All-Star and reigning Rookie of the Year has finally slowed the game down at the highest level? I, I mean, I don't know if you can say it, but it seems like that's indeed happened for Bryce Harper here in the last three weeks. And now Desmond lines it hard. Solano on a great pick on a short hop. And that is some 4-6-3 double play. Well, Kohler not fooling anybody this inning. I mean, a walk to Zimmerman, an opposite field home run to Harper is 19th. And then Jason Worth with a bullet to right field for a single. And how about this? Bullet off the bat of Desmond. What a play by Solano, right? A little short hop into his glove. Jason Worth had to slide. Watch where Worth slides right here. I mean, he had to slide about 15 feet in front of the bag so he didn't get hit with a throw. Here's Adam LaRoche. Kohler got ahead of him 0-2 first time, had him reaching for an off-speed pitch, and Adam rolled it over to the second baseman. Things happening quickly in the fourth inning. Adam will chop it right side. Tough play. Lucas comes to get it. He can make the tag. Had to play it on that hop. Big blow by Bryce Harper after a leadoff walk to Ryan Zimmerman. 19 for Bryce and up to 49 on the RBI scale. And he is really heating it up here in late August. Bob to the whole Bryce Harper thing. You know, there's a part of you that, that, that may miss the run till they tag you offense in, in the violent swing that we, you know, we broke down a lot like Babe Ruth where the back foot comes off the ground. But, you know, right now, I feel like you're in the middle of seeing Bryce Harper kind of slow the game down at the highest level to where he was so good his first year in the big leagues. But it was still moving at a fast pace, right? He made mm -hmm. a lot of base running mistakes that he got away with because he was aggressive. You know, missed cutoff men, swung at some bad balls. But now, all of a sudden, I think you're seeing the 20-year-old in the last two or three weeks kind of really understand the game as a whole and really start to slow things down. I think it's a great call, great observation on your part because the swings are effortless. We saw the back foot on that home run swing barely come off the ground, then right back down. And the, the one thing I'm really pleased about those walls are a lot slower behind him too. They're not they're not coming up on him as fast as well, they used to be. Well, that's a good point. I mean he's taken his eyes off the ball a couple of times in left field found the fence made some good plays to where. You know late August September of your second year. I mean that's a guy that has so that's a 50 home run guy someday that really hasn't tapped into it yet. And is a two time all star and reigning rookie of the year. And when you look at a guy like Ken Griffey Jr. when he was 19 years old, 264, 16 home runs, 61 RBIs, 20, at age 20, started to get a little more, 22 home runs the next year with 80 RBIs and a 300 average. But it's a process to where, you know, he's going to hit his prime when he's 23, 24, and he's still just 20 years old. Gio has some kind of tough breaking ball going out. Strikes out Solano. 
his last four outs and five of his last seven now swinging third strikes. One more point on Harper. Bryce is playing in his 95th game of the year. By the time he plays 100, he'll probably have 20 home runs, and he'll probably be over 50 RBIs. And he's played part of the season all banged up, too. You know, some of those ball games he probably shouldn't have been out there, but he wanted to be. So, but those numbers are good, but they're, they're, they're scratching the surface right. of what he's capable of doing, and, and in my opinion, what he is going to do here in the next two or three years. Ball in the air twice for Ed Lucas tonight. Line drive to right, fly ball to center. So Geo challenging with the fastball and then getting outs with the curveball. You know, I'm loving the, the more shots we get of the crowd and foul balls, the more people are bringing their gloves to Nats Park. I mean, word is out. You walk around the yard, you see everybody with their gloves now. It's a good pitch. It's a good 0 2 pitch. Not for a strike, but serves its purpose. There's that curveball. LaRoche couldn't reach it. it. Had to be foul. It was near the line. And the count stays 1 and 2. By, by the way, one game of interest tonight as far as the wild card race goes fourth inning at Pittsburgh Brewers three Pirates nothing they're a half game behind St. Louis and three up on Cincinnati and that ball ripped to right but here comes Worth. he loves to play shallow and take base hits away two outs so American University with t-shirts tomorrow night and fireworks after the game that's weather permitting Mets in here at 705 for the Jordan Zimmerman Dylan G matchup. Go to nationals.com slash tickets. Grab yourself some seats for tomorrow night. Stanton to walk in the first to strike out in the third. 2 and 0. Oh. Fastball up and in. Jammed the heck out of him. Here comes LaRoche. And when you're talking about a hitter like that, that is severe on the jamage meter. And a 1 2 3 for Geo. He's had three quick innings in a row. And Gio Gonzalez here at Nationals Park. 2 4 0 Nats, 0 3 0. Fish, let's talk about a guy with an ATT fact of the game who deserves to kick his feet up. 
put his arms back and his ball cap back as Craig Stammen right now is the third busiest pitcher in Major League Baseball. Anthony Swarzak of Minnesota, Josh Colmenter of Arizona, and then Craig Stammen. Good job last night with three solid innings. Yeah, he has rescued some ball games lately, so has Tanner Roark. Ramos pulled a bouncing ball to third base first time. And that's a high strike. Rendon and Gio Gonzalez to follow bottom five. Breaking ball. Kind of spinning its way over to Solano for the first out. So more on Craig Stammen. Here's Julie. Well, Craig Stammen was telling me it was almost a joke yesterday. Once it started raining, he said, I'm not even going to bother going back into the clubhouse. I know I'm going in. So he just decided to stay in the bullpen and started tossing. He said, I don't know what it is. Every time Steven Strasburg takes the mound, something is always happening. He said, I feel bad for the guy. It's always something. But once again, Craig Stammen always ready. 13 decisions, seven wins, six losses. In those 73 innings, 67 strikeouts, just 71 hits. You cannot overemphasize the value of guys who save the bullpen on a regular basis. I mean, it's all great and cool to be the guy on the mound in the eighth inning or the ninth inning, but somebody's got to get it there on certain nights. Yeah, and it's hard for relievers. Because when you're that middle guy, you start thinking about it. Yeah, it's nice to be in the big leagues, and I love helping my ball club out and saving the bullpen. <laughs> Somebody I told love, him he's on. I love being on TV. <laughs> but how do you get paid? Those guys don't get paid. Yeah. I mean, relievers get paid if you get saves. You're in the eighth and ninth inning. So when you're you're going out there and working as hard as he is, and you know you're always wondering if you know your arm's going to hold up and for how long it is going to hold up. Would your a guy <laughs> calling all of his buddies in, in the now. middle. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that is a motley crew right there. Look at the parade wave with Clifford. <laughs> I guess the point I'm trying to make is it's selfless because it's really hard to get paid when you're a middle reliever and not a, a late inning guy. Yeah. And some people, some believe that that's the reason the hold stat came into being. Give, you know, gives the middle and setup guys some credit. For holding the ball game or holding a lead as it is. And when I, I mean, when I mean paid, it's all relative. Right? Sure. I mean, they make a very handsome living doing what they're doing, but I'm talking about the, the Soriano contracts, the, the stuff where you can set up generations is you know, generally reserved for the guys at the end of the ball game. Gio lays down a bunt, and it's a very good one. That's Lucas to Solano and another run potentially at second base now with two outs. Gio lays down his seventh sacrifice of the year. For the Achiever and you, PNC Bank with our minor league report. And we check in on Adrian Nieto, young man from Cuba who played high school baseball in the Miami area. Still just 23. And he is tough. Six foot 200 at high A playoff bound Potomac hitting just under 290 and driving in some runs. He's ready. Call him up. He'll be playing in the Arizona Fall League if indeed that is a call up. And that's a privilege to be chosen out there. Well the Gulf Coast League team cart finished 49 and 9 845 winning percentage. I believe they start the playoffs tomorrow. 49 and 9. They're going to go on a barnstorming tour after the season and play the Dodgers. <laughs> well, the confidence level they have right now, when you're winning like that, I'm sure they feel like they could. One oh pitch. Span looks at it up and away. Best arm by far in the Miami outfield is Stanton. Six assists on the year. Hardly anybody running on him and since he had those two and one inning against the Nats the weekend before the All-Star break. 
I'm sure that young guy out in center field will be heard from as the years go by. Prospect Jake Marisnik. And Span will go left side. Two balls, one strike. Pitch counts low all night. Ten first innings, six in the second, eight in the third, eleven in the fourth. Tom Kohler has a way of making things happen pretty quickly. He's thrown 20 pitches already this inning, though. Pardon me, just uh, 11 pitches. I was looking at another column on the scoreboard, and that's a bouncer span out to Solano. That'll take care of the Nats. They've stranded only two runners tonight in a two-nothing ball game. Has nine outs on 46 pitches. Took him 43 to get through the first two. And AFCIA, the Association for Global Security Professionals, checks in with Julie on our sideline report. Hey, Bob. Well, recently, Ryan Zimmerman has made some spectacular defensive plays, specifically in the past two games against the Marlins. But it hasn't always been easy for him this season. He has struggled with that throwover from third to first. And I asked him if it was anything to do with recovering from the shoulder surgery he underwent on his right shoulder on October 25th of last year. He said, you know, they told me that it should have been pretty much good to go by June. The recovery process has taken a little bit longer than he initially thought. But he said... He he feels good about it because, surprisingly, it's become, it's started to come around. He said, I got into some bad habits overcompensating for the pain and just to survive in the game, basically. But he feels that he has, things have started to let up a little bit. He feels that he's on the road to being fully healed, and it's nice to see him doing so well over there. And doing great in center field, Denard Spann. You get it anywhere near that guy, he's going to catch up with it. So that's 11 of the last 12 for Gio Gonzalez. And going back to Ryan Zimmerman, FP, there's no doubt about the fact that over the last couple of weeks, he's thrown the ball much better. Well, stronger. And last night, there was a play where he had to actually backpedal, shuffle, shuffle, and throw, and that's the one that was giving him problems early in the season to where the routine one where he maybe had to retreat to get the big hop and then get his feet underneath him. He had that play going to his left last night, gathered himself, and threw a strike with something on it to LaRoche. I mean... Early in the season, he was wishing the ball over there. You know, the shoulder not feeling well and didn't really have anything on it. And, and lately, he's been gaining more confidence. And as Julie said, getting strength in that arm. And the throws have been better. Polanco, right field, easy for Worth. Placido had hit line drives to center and to first base. And Gio Gonzalez is cruising here in the middle of the ball game with uh, Danny Echeverria, the shortstop, coming up.
four pitches this inning. And a guy who likes to hack early. This will be interesting. He hacks early out of play. Too bad he didn't hit it fair. Could have had a five pitch inning. <laughs> but Gio has really turned his night around. How many times have we said that this year? There have been early season or early game issues here and there. But you got that breaking ball going for a strike. He's been really tough. Now guys don't want to get to two strikes, so they're swinging. Well, you make the call at home. You're the first base on. What do you think? Might have been far enough. You're not home. You're sitting next to me. Now. You're asking everybody at home. Yeah, but they have better TVs than we do. No, I got a good one. Yeah, you have HD over there. Here's his lane. Mine's awesome. Mine has a dog sitting on a phonograph. Does that mean it's old? You have tinfoil on your <laughs> rabbit ears next to me. Sometimes I go into the outer limits during a game. <laughs> That's out of play right side. Not a whole lot in that Marlins box score. Infield chopper Ruggiano first inning. Clean single that Cerveria in the second. And Marisnik up the middle in the fourth. Gio got himself in trouble early with three walks, but he's been able to pitch around them. 2-2. Two -two. Jammed it. Zimmerman cuts it off. On the run, squares up and fires it to La Roche. Gio pitching well. The guys are sharp behind him. And with Ryan making this play, 13 of the last 14 retired. Four coming up, so our do-ups for the sixth brought to you by Kia. Visit Kia.com and learn why Kia is one of the fastest growing car brands in America. So there's Bryce, last 11 games, just under 390. You saw Ryan and what he's doing. And then Jason Worth, a ridiculous August, almost 400. By the way, he started this night 2.1 plate appearances short of appearing on the National League individual stat sheet we call it departmental leaders in the league and he is right on the doorstep and right now Worth's batting average would be third best in the league third time around for Ryan Zimmerman who has singled and walked This kind of shows you a perfect example how things have changed around here offensively. Did you think in April or May, maybe even June, that there would be a Nationals hitter that may contend for a batting title? Breaking ball, and Ryan was waiting for it. It appeared. And he's had a perfect night. Two hits and a walk. What in the world would be your Kia drive of the game? Oh, I don't know, but it's time for it. I'll look just like you do. Kia Drive of the Game brought to you by Kia. Visit Kia.com and why Kia is one of the fastest growing car brands in America. 
I mean, that's just a swing easy when it's breezy swing right there. It's effort aimed breezy. Bryce Harper going the other way. Home run number 19. Don't forget he hit an opposite field home run in Kansas City last weekend. You can look in right here too. He hit an oppo tater. You can look on the inner half next time up. They're going away. That's at least where the target was and 93 missed. Harper in this series now. Four for ten a homer three RBIs. And he's one short of 50. And a home run short of 20. Worth got there last night. Ball two. Gaging. Ah. And he went soft on two and oh. Nissan will track it. I'm going to check out the 2 0 backdoor slider at 85. He's got the corn. Target in. Nets box, couple of hits. A double play ruined a possible first inning rally. Fourth inning, Zimmerman lead off walk, Harper opposite field homer. And then since then, Worth with a base hit, Rendon with a walk, and Zimmerman just a moment ago a hit. The National Space Runners. 250 Washington, 030 Miami. Short lead at first. Harper jumps at the off speed pitch and able to stay alive. So move the fastball around early. Backdoor slider to an inside slider to a 2-2 curveball. Change up for a home run. Hasn't seen it yet. And Bryce hit two home runs against them opening day. First two times up. They've seen this act before. Way inside the target. Three and two. That reach back 95 right there. Crowd once more. Two nothing. Sixth inning. Nobody out. Zimmerman a very short lead on a payoff pitch, but he's running. And Harper will chop it and stay alive. With Bryce's homer tonight, Nats have hit 126 on the year, seventh most in the league. Target away. Ryan got a really good jump on that 3 2 pitch, considering he only had maybe a step and a half, two step leadoff. So Kohler thought he would check him. Ryan running. Harper takes it. Two on. Nobody out. And for the umpteenth time this year, taking what the game gives him, knowing good hitters are coming up. Great at bat. Firestone complete auto care extra mile index. And there's what we talked about with Jason Worth. Just under three plate appearances from qualifying for the batting leaders, and he would go right ahead of Michael Kadire, right behind Chris Johnson. And within sight of Yadier Molina. Boy, it's not like anybody's run away with it. Like somebody's hitting 350. So, yeah, Jason Worth will be in the mix for a batting title. Because when you get to where you are right now, your, your average is stabilized. You have so many at bats. You, you go for four and your average drops two points to where. I mean, legitimate shot. Base hit last time, opposite field. Hit the ball. 
probably harder than that in the first inning with a hot shot 4 6 3 to Solano in a situation a lot like this except this time nobody out and Kohler drops one in. Don't you just get the feeling that even on his takes if he would have swung it's going to be a hit hard somewhere. <laughs> I don't know maybe it's just the way I'm seeing it right now but. So worth number 20 last night Desmond and Harper on the verge. LaRoche and Zimmerman right behind that's a pretty big five right there. That's also a good sign you've been seeing a lot of. Dirty unis. Spans had a dirty uni every night. Zimmerman's got one tonight. Worst got one working. And you're getting a lot of guys on base, keeping the line moving, playing hard. It's a good looking unit. One one pitch. High slider ball two. Sam Dyson recalled today. Called him up from Triple A New Orleans. He was also at their double A this year. And then Another hit. See you later. Five nothing on Worth's twenty first. I'll tell you what. There's a new beast in town. He's wearing number twenty eight. I mean, you can just tell the way he's taking pitches right now. That he's on everything, and it's just a matter of swinging the bat. He's going to put it into play hard. First time up, he had a rocket to Solano for a double play. Last time up, a base hit. This time, 21st homer of the year to make it 5 nothing. And there hasn't been a cheapie in the bunch. Look at the cement mixer right there up in the zone, and Worth catches it out front. Confidence high, and... For two months now, he's been a complete beast. Desmond to the left side. Polanco cuts it off, and he pulls Ed Lucas off the bag. So the Nats are going for the jugular here in the sixth inning. A nice job getting to it, but because of the speed of Desmond and Ian hustling down the line like he always does, Polanco rushed the throw. And pulled Lucas off the base. And how are they going to score that one? You would think after seeing that replay, they would go error because Desmond wasn't at the bag yet. But not a routine play. You want me to do it? I give it a hit. And you're correct. That's what they've done. All right. And we have no problem with that. Three hits in the inning, around to walk. Twice tonight, the right hander Tom Kohler has walked a batter ahead of a home run. For now, he stays in the game. Well, I told the truck and the talk back, watch how far this pitch goes before Worth swung. He just had a feeling by the way he was taking pitches, the way he's been swinging, and the fact that all of a sudden Kohler was elevating the off speed, that that was the perfect storm for a far one. And it's just nice to see that first base dugout having fun. We had some good shots of the bullpen tonight smiling. Feels like things are changing around here. No, oh, I think they have. Nats trying to make it eight out of nine. They could gain a half game on Idle Cincinnati, and at the end of the night, could be one half game back of Arizona, and six and a half back of the Reds. Larocho for two. Couple of ground balls pulled to the right side. Inside two and zero. Oh. Great time to steal right here because McCuller's fighting for his life in this ball game. He's not thinking about Ian Desmond at first. 
Get a good jump and go. Good, good count, good time in the game to go fast court, fast break. Excuse me, offense right there. 3 and 0. Oh. Even better count to go right here. A three already on the board in this inning, and nobody out. I mean, Another runner on. Who's playing better than Worth? Four pitch walk. And we'll see if that finishes Tom Kohler. He got one visit, got a reprieve. That's his fourth walk of the night. Wilson Ramos coming in. He has retired him twice on ground balls. And so they're probably hoping for a double play here. If you make a mistake to this guy, and that's going to be it. Double switch coming. So Kohler will go five batters, but no outs into the sixth inning. Nats will take their hit total from four to seven in this inning. He also walked four. This call to the bullpen packaged by the UPS store. We love logistics. Full out sprinting. Who's going to get it? Tom on the right side or Abe on the left? And it's number 16. I feel like Abe could steal your base if you need a pinch runner late. He could just take two steps, slide, and his head would be the second. Marlins making some changes on their infield here. With a new pitcher who just reported today. We told you about Sam Dyson. Ed Lucas will go from First base over to third. The new first baseman will be Logan Morrison. And then Sam Dyson will be the pitcher. This Morrison, he'll be batting ninth on the double switch. So Polanco's out of the game. Their pitcher will be batting in the number five spot. There's Lucas over at third base now. And 23rd appearance for Dyson. 4 and 11 record, a lot of decisions. 2 6 7 ERA. And three pitches fastball, curveball change. Fastball averages 92 miles an hour. He throws it a lot. Ramos able to fight that ball off to right. You know Desmond's tagging. Runner at first. LaRoche will stay. And Ian Desmond's over to third base with one out. Productive out right there by Wilson Ramos. Moving the runner nicely done. Four. 
RBI chance for Anthony Rendon. Not to be lost in all of this, the fact that over the last four innings, Gio Gonzalez has thrown 56 pitches, 40 strikes to keep this a 2 nothing game so that the offense could eventually come together and put a big number up on that board. Well, he's just got so many working parts like Gio has. Rendon base hit 6 nothing. Anthony jumps on the first one from Dyson and that'll be his 27th RBI bringing in Desmond. Sam Dyson in this game's throwing two pitches. One a fly ball to right one a base hit to left. And give Wilson Ramos some credit right there for moving the runner getting Ian Desmond to third base with one out and setting the stage for Rendon. It's good situational baseball leads to another run nicely done. Gio for one. With a bunt tonight he could be laying another one down. Marlins pinching in from the corners. Trying to send two more runners into scoring position. If he can do that while making the second out. Whoa, way inside. And Gio had to get his lower half out of there. The ball foul tipped. You see how Gio is in kind of a hurry to get out of the box right there. Bunt the ball, see it down, then run. You try to do it all at once, it makes your head move. It's making your bat move, and it will cause you to miss the pitch. Two one. And Gio lunging at that one counts even. I think he's hoping he gets the swing away right here, looking at that sign from Trent Jewett. I don't know if did that fastball way inside. I don't know, maybe it's easier to swing than square around for a bunt after something like that. And square. Time given to the catcher, Jeff Mathis. Two on, one out. Four runs home. And Gio will swing and foul tip it. Pretty healthy rip. Not a problem swing with two strikes up by six runs. On the hands and the Marlins will turn that pitcher's swing into a inning ending four six three double play but a big frame for the Nats. Zimmerman single Harper walk and worth a long one to left way out of here. Then a Rendon RBI would make it six nothing worth a big blast like Harper earlier.
And Gio Gonzalez, after a rocky first inning, settled down nice. In six innings, six Ks. And the fastball's been good, but the curveball's been the trick with two strikes. It's all been based on throwing that fastball in the zone with a little late hop on it. Guys trying to cheat in a two-strike mode, thinking they might get that fastball in. And they're out in front of the curveball. So Gio Gonzalez has had a good fastball curve combination here tonight. He's thrown some change-ups as well when he's needed to to get back into the strike zone. But in the middle of a nice rebound effort after last outing against the Royals. Well, there are your power hitters that have backed him up with the bats and solid defense. But after the first couple of innings when he had 43 pitches, who would have given Gio a chance to possibly go through seven? He's had 98 pitches, 65 strikes. Facing the bottom three for the Marlins, it'll be Marisnik, Mathis, and Morrison. Well, this is where I think after a 77 pitch effort last time that you know maybe Gio Gonzalez is thinking about 98 pitches so I'm going to have to have some economical innings here. Maybe smelling the finish line tonight. I mean he's gone seven or more ten times this year for obvious reasons. Bullpen's been working hard. Good challenge fastball 0 2. Slowed down his bat with the off speed pitch. Worth right there. Another concert 48 hours from now. Gavin DeGraw will be here after Saturday night's game. Nats Mets. It's a 705 contest. Some of the tickets as low as $10. Nationals.com slash Nats Live. Some restrictions apply. Your ticket has to say August 31st. There's Jeff Mathis 0 for 1 with a walk. That's how good Gio's been now. Seventh inning. Bottom of the order just now getting their third at bats. Well, I think we're going to come on camera here the next inning and do our little thing. It's going to give me plenty of time to change into my 80s wardrobe for the concert. My Van Halen t-shirt, my leather pants, my chains, my mullet wig. I'm ready to go. And that'll be the best solo appearance without your partner you make on camera yep. this year. That's for after at the concert. There's a the curveball we just showed you. Three pitch, see ya. And Mathis, who's had a tough night against Gio, walked his first time up. Has struck out back-to-back -back at bats. That was Mercedes Benz on the pitch track, and here's Gio against Logan Morrison, who just checked in on a double switch to play first base. He's 0 for 2 career against Gonzalez with a walk, and that fastball's in there. Ninety four in the seventh inning. Well, you just feel like he's getting stronger, right? Getting the pitch off the full windup. So ever since the second inning, he's found his release point, rhythm, groove, on time, whatever you want to say. It's all going on right now. Quick inning, eight strikeouts. He's a definite candidate to go eight and maybe more. Fans love it. Jefferson Memorial looks beautiful on this Thursday evening and the seventh inning stretch at Nationals Park brought to you by the Hyundai Clearance Countdown. Visit your local Hyundai dealers this week.
The gang having a great time. Not many of these kind of ball games for the Nats this year. Good time to have it. Gio getting the job done. And uh, we'll see about that going the distance thing. But he's definitely a candidate to come out for three more outs in the eighth inning. Held this thing together until the offense could break the game open. Well, he said last start that he was feeling the effects of 120 pitches before the game in Kansas City. I think tonight you're seeing the effect of 77 pitches against the Royals last time. Gio Gonzalez got in his rhythm. He's gotten stronger as this game has gone on. And, you know, we talked about the offense in the open, and they just keep doing their thing. Great at-bat after great at-bat. Great situational hitting. And the big knock, the big blow with a couple of home runs, one from Bryce Harper and one from Jason Wirth. Top of the order again. Bottom of the seventh in our span, one for three. Couple of ground balls to second since that first inning hit up the middle, extending his career high tying streak to 12. Get over there. And a hopper to Morrison. Your mission, our commitment, visit AngelityCorp.com. Perfect night for Ryan Zimmerman coming in. So the most homers against the Marlins, all guys within the division except. For Prince Fielder, who used to play, of course, for Milwaukee of the Central, and now the Tigers. I, I wouldn't call that a surprising number of guys. David Wright, Ryan Zimmerman, Ryan Howard, Brian McCann, the best in the division over the years. Well, those are guys that obviously have played in the division. They played in that old ballpark where that short porch to left. Zimmerman's got another. Three for three for Ryan tonight with a walk. Yeah, base hit first time up, walk second time up in the fourth. Third time up, knock. Fourth time up, knock. Three for three. Get that foot down after that big leg kick. Didn't really get extended, but kind of muscled that ground ball. Perfectly placed up the middle. Third hit of the night. Tanner Roark. Geo's thrown 108 pitches through seven. Big lead. Davey may be so happy with that. He'll go ahead and give him the rest of the night off. As we mentioned earlier, a lot of stress in those early innings. So if that's it, Geo goes 65 pitches and 49 strikes over five innings. From the third through the seventh. I don't think we'll look out to the bullpen anytime soon and see anybody throwing because they need the work. No side work this time of the year. And a 1 1 to Harper. Base hit by Bryce. Two hit night for him. Zimmerman stops. And the Nats are moving the line again. So you look at Zimmerman, Harper, and Worth. Those three hitters now have been on base eight times tonight. Yeah, change up right there. Stayed on it, down and away. Pulled it through the hole created by Zimmerman's knot. Not going to test the arm of Stanton. Up by six. Another good at bat from Harper. Worth two for three. Base hit opposite field. Three run homer to left. And I mean way out of here. First two games of the series. 2-1, 4-3. Marlins feel like they're running into a buzzsaw tonight. Double digit hits again for the Nats. Nine Monday, ten last night, and ten more this evening. And this is how it goes. When you're locked in, you're hitting the ball hard, you have a good approach, you're doing damage. Pitchers are trying to hit spots. They're trying to be perfect with every pitch. And the fact that you're seeing the ball well, combined with the fact that you're hitting the ball well, it gets you into hitters' counts almost every single time up. They're trying to be fine. You're seeing it good. You find yourself 2-0. Base hit off the mound. 
slowed the ball up enough. So here comes Zimmerman. The throw is in time, and he tries to reach for the bag and can't get it. Or at least the plate. So there's a look into the future for the Marlins for Jake Marisnik, that big, strong, speedy center fielder. Well, good gamble by Jewett, up by six runs. Why not? The ball just hit too hard by Worth, and a good throw by Marisnik right on the money. And just another lousy single for Worth. Third hit of the night. Base hit in the fourth, home run in the sixth, and a knock right there, and a pretty nifty slide by Ryan Zimmerman at home. Took the inside route, tried to sneak his hand around Mathis, but you see Mathis getting him right on the shoulder right there for the second out of the inning. Here's Desmond. He's one for three, base hit last time. 11th hit of the night. Yeah, 30 hits in the series now. Well, we had this in the open today. I want to show it to you guys again. In the last 18 games, five and a half runs a game. That ranks first in the National League. 10.7 hits, 11 tonight. That's probably going to stay the same. Batting average, 295 first. On base percentage, 369. Best one in the bottom, 13 and five record. Second best in the big leagues, not the National League, in the big leagues. And then the always fun 60 and 16 when they score three runs or more. <clears throat> One and two to Desmond. Big gap in the left center. So three consecutive singles, a runner thrown out at the plate. And Desmond lifts one high in the air to left. This ball is coming down in the seats. And it's nine to nothing. the season for number 20. And this ball club is flat out raking. And there's no other way to put it. I mean a high towering drive that was almost coming straight down when it flew out of here at about the 350 mark. LaRoche will be next. Well, he looked like he was going to go deep the whole at bat. Every single pitch he swung at, he was on, and he finally got a little two seamer that ran right back onto his barrel. And as soon as he hit it, he knew it was gone. Had the sound, had the distance. And congratulations to Ian Desmond, home run number 20. A couple more bags, and you're a 2020 guy. Desmond led Major League shortstops with 25 last year. At the age of 27, with a birthday in less than a month, just getting better every day. Well, you get. LaRoche to jump on this train. Look out. <laughs> Serious. Get him to come to the party. Lock it in a little bit for the month of September.
And Lenoche will take a 3 0 pitch in there. And LaRoche grounded right side. Donovan Solano. The Nats another big number. Four last inning. Three this inning. Desmond's RBI total shoots up to 67 with a majestic clout to left. The Nats all over the fish tonight. It's 9-0. Harper, Worth, Desmond, the big boys going deep tonight. And every time that adds at a home run, now there have been 128 of them. It's $250 to the Children's National Medical Center. That's from our D.C. Lexus dealers. Lexus, the pursuit of perfection. Marlins have given up some of the fewest home runs since the 1st of July. But the Nats are going long distance tonight. Chad Tracy on a double switch will play first base. Adam LaRoche out of the ball game and batting sixth and pitching. Tanner Roark, who has swooped in, grabbed four wins out of the bullpen, but deservedly so with that barely over one ERA. Yeah, four pitch guy, fastball, curveball, slider change. And maybe the best entrance song in the big league, Stranglehold by Ted Nugent. Gio gives up three hits, no runs, strikes out eight, walks three and seven. Very good innings. And that one right in there to Donovan Solano. Eighth inning underway. Puts another one right in there. Desmond to his left from behind the bag. And a pick by Tracy for the out. Tonight's copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Washington Nationals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Washington Nationals. Nationals pitchers have retired 17 of the last 18 Marlins. And Roark right at him calmly knocks it down two outs. <laughs> Oh, the horseshoe in his back pocket right now is just a beautiful thing if you're Tanner Roark. There was a day off, the whole team would fly him to Vegas. Oh, yeah. I put a, a, a ton of chips on 59 on roulette, I'll tell you that right now. Right back at him. Not a problem. Pick it up, plenty of time.
And then he breaks John Carlos Stanton's bat. Desmond throws him out. And Tanner Rohr with a quick one, two, three, eighth on five pitches. Kia. Visit Kia.com to learn why Kia is one of the fastest growing car brands in America. From right back there in the Anacostia River, beautiful night in D.C. And the scoreboard lit and all lit up by the guys. Nine runs on 12 hit. Didn't get started till the fourth on the Harper two run homer. But since then, look out. Potomac Nationals on their way to the playoffs. First round starting September 4th. Through the sixth down at the Fitz in Woodbridge. Get playoff and season ticket information for next year at 703-590-2311 or PotomacNationals.com. Harrisburg Ball Club's doing well. Big boys are playing really well. And here's a guy who needs some work. This is the Miami closer, Sidewinder Steve Ciszek, who has 28 saves on the year. Fifth rounder back in 07. It was interesting in the minor leagues in all of his time there, five some years, he had 29 saves, 19 last year, and he is a bona fide tough guy to hit type closer. Well, especially if you're right handed with that three quarter delivery. I mean, you think of three quarter guys, you don't think of a good fastball, but he's got a good one. Ramos steps in. Yeah, there it is. The little average 92. A slider 83. And an occasional change up at 85. Wilson Ramos against C. Sheck, one for four career. We'll run that one up in the zone a bit, but didn't get the call. Face a guy that throws three quarters like this, or sidearm, however you want to call it. You still have to go up there and find that release point, that release window, to where that ball is coming out of. And once you do that, it's time to go to work. But when you're facing conventional guys that throw three quarters over the top for a month or so, till you see a guy like this, you still have to find that release point. That's the first thing you do, that's job number one, especially as a right handed guy. And he'll throw that first be breaking ball on you. And, and, and what you do is you as a hitter. You take your eyes kind of from the top of his hat and as he starts his motion, you go to that point. 
down there and find that window and that release point. So you're kind of looking at his hat right now. Now you go down that window and try to find the release point. It's not easy. Yeah, sometimes the ball seems to be rising when he throws the heater. And so Ramos strikes out. He's 0 for 4. We'll have a Nissan pitch track. We got some late movement in at 92. There's that release point I'm talking about. You see that rotation to get that sink from down under. Good pitch. Next up, Anthony Rendon, who has faced him once and been struck out. Anthony base hit RBI last time and he takes one outside had walked earlier. So Rendon making some noise offensively again for for his last 12. With a couple of walks thrown in. And he'll hook this one great diving catch. Ed Lucas playing the hot corner. Oh, just a reaction play right there. That ball hits so hard. So all you can do is take a step, a dive, make the play. So you start the game at first base. You move over the other corner. You snow cone a line drive off the bat of Anthony Rendon. Nice play. Well, these Marlins will be back in town for the Nats' final three home games of the season. September 20, 21, 22, before they finish things off with that crazy road trip to St. Louis and Arizona. And it's nothing but Marlins Mets Phillies at Miami at New York. Phillies here Braves here Marlins here. I mean everything's in the division until the last six games. Call me nuts but that last road trip's going to be huge. Well, it could be huge for the Nats Arizona and St. Louis. Well I don't care about those other two teams though. Outside one ball two strikes. Well my point is intense baseball that last week because. I don't think anybody's going to be coasting in the postseason. Whoever the Nats face they're going to need to win. And the Nats are going to need to win and that's going to make for some kind of week. You can follow that on MLB.com at bat. Number one mobile app for live baseball. Delivers Nats action with live audio, pitch tracking, stats, and highlights. Text at bat to 31826. And a 1-2 to Tracy. He'll fly it to center. Their closer needed some work. The Nats closer will get a night off. It's a nine-run lead. Three outs from a sweep.
Here's Tanner Roark, top of the ninth inning. First pitch fly ball, Ruggiano. Right center, worth one set. One out. Tanner Roark has four outs on six pitches. Toyota case for kids. There were some strikeouts. Eight by Geo tonight. $37 every time that happens. Donated by the D.C. area Toyota dealers to the Children's Inn at NIH. Toyota K's for kids. Juan Pierre for the pitcher here. And Juan Pierre, 2,209 hits. Active leader with 611 stolen bases. He'll get in a bat here. And they are going up swinging. He's 0 for 1 in the series. And Juan Pierre Geitz never wasted any time in the batter's box. Has a, had a wonderful career and a guy that really knows how the game is supposed to be played. Anybody who's ever been a teammate of his tell you he's one of the first to the park. Busy during batting practice. I mean, Tanner Roark looks like he's out there playing catch with Wilson and Ramos. Two outs. Nats about to go three games over 500. They're about to go 10 over at home. My skipper smiling. How many times have you seen that lately? A lot more lately than in the month or two before that. Dylan G and Jordan Zimmerman <laughs> tomorrow night, and Jordan will be going for number 16. Everybody's smiling. What in the world is going on? Whatever it is, I like it. And a bouncer. Hustling down to first, Echeverria, safe. That's the Marlins' first base hit since the fourth inning. And when that hit happened, the Nationals pitchers had retired 21 of the previous 22 hitters. What a play by Roark. And this crowd at Nats Park was locked and loaded to go berserk right here. If there was an out call at first, it looked like Echeverria beat it easily, but this place would have came unglued if that was the last out. Jake Mariznick for the Marlins. Mercedes Benz on the pitch track. Slider popped up. And the Nets seem to be sending a message that it's not football season just yet. Still got a pulse, still got a heartbeat. Offense is swinging the bats. Gio Gonzalez getting the job done. Jason Woods turning into a serious beast here late in the season. And the Nets showing some heavy metal here, winning nine to nothing with 12 more hits. In under two and a half hours, it's a decisive nine nothing win, a decisive three game sweep. This ball club very much alive.